Good morning, Tara. Um, this is your progress chart. Um, I sent three charts in the, uh, I think I sent three, two or three charts in the um, document package for you to follow along with this. Um, so I have it open, so I'm going to read it with you, okay? Um, so, <laughs> so um, you're not natally rising in Gemini, but you've progressed into an Aslisha rising. Uh, this is a Vedic term for a uh, large part of stars called Cetus. Uh, Cetus was the snake. It goes along the bottom of Cancer. It actually goes from like way on this side of Cancer to way way on this side of Cancer, so Cancer's here, way on this side of Cancer to way on this side of Cancer. So it's one of the only um, nishatras that takes up like just one sign. A lot of them, um, <clears throat> which are, nishatras are lunar mansions. They're spaces inside a sign. So there's three of them generally, pada one, two, three, and four. Sorry, there's normally four spaces inside your nakshatra that make it even more of a subdivision, um, but you actually have uh, progressed Aslesha rising. Uh, Aslesha is, well, I actually put a video down at the bottom, a link to video, one of my favorite videos to send people with Aslesha's rising. Aslesha is my eighth house, uh, personally, so I get a lot of people who transform my life with this ascendant, including my eldest daughter. <laughs> so I know it quite well. It's actually a really freaking beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, enjoy that video down at the bottom. That's one of my favorite teachers. It's a long one. Definitely take your time with it, okay? You can tell that I, uh, and you already have a spiritual connection because I'm taping this right now at 1.51. The timing, just as I said that, said 1.51, and you just messaged me to say that, oh, you sent me a video. <laughs> I can't look at that right now. I will look at it after I'm done recording this, but, um, I'm just going to send you the word jinx. And uh, you'll you'll know why later. All right. Anyways, <laughs> back to your chart. Okay. So you have progressed from a Gemini rising into a Cancer rising. Uh, so this means that uh, for every day that you've been born, your sun has also progressed. Uh, for every year you've been born, so you have progressed into a Leo sun. Um, your sun is progressed into the progressed. A Leo Mars. So you're like super, 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 super full of fire. You're a fire dragon. That's what, see, this is a dragon. Okay. See, this is a, it's, a, it's, uh, it's called the snake. It's called the serpent, but it's the serpent is also what, um, Asian culture calls dragons too. They align them with dragons. Um, and in Asian culture, dragons didn't actually breathe fire. They breathed water. They, that's, they were water dragons. Right. And then in Indian culture, it's fire. So, um, uh, Vedic astrology goes back to Indian astrology. Um, so it's actually from the Eastern side and it aligns with what's in the sky right now. Um, but that's a whole different thing. I will talk to you about that later. We'll go into that later. Um, but I just wanted to introduce that video at the bottom. Okay. So that's enough of that. Um, so yes, your progressed chart. So I'm, I've got, I've now got, um, your thing up in front of me. You message me back. No, that's my partner. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the first chart you see. Move my thing here. You're in like right in front of my computer. If you can't tell. So the first chart, the first thing you see, it says rising in Gemini, progressed rising in Cancer, progressed rising aligned with natal Sun in Cancer. That means that your progressed Sun and your progressed ascendant are at the same degree. They're working together, um, and that means there is a support of nature from your identity, which is your first house, and your sun, which is your path. Uh, your path is in the second house, so you're very much in your values are in yourself and your path, and your path is now a Leo Mars path. Uh, Leo Mars is really freaking amazing. This is a fire-wielding king, fire-wielding queen. Um, Mars in Leo is the, it's the page, or uh, the Ned Wands uh, card. So uh, arriving with a, a message and a, a, a drive and a destination of uh, excitement and creation. That's the Leo energy, right? Um, and it's coming from a very internalized place. It's coming from a place of like, now that you've nurtured yourself, 
now that you've progressed into a place where you've nurtured yourself, you can use your creativity. I'm in the same kind of vibe, so I'm totally feeling that. That's awesome. By the way, happy Eclipse Day, um, uh, which is happening at 8 degrees Sagittarius. So this transit, this eclipse is actually supporting from a fire of knowledge and aspiration and growth. It's coming from that sun. Like right now, the transit of that sun is coming down onto your Leo progressed sun and your Leo progressed sun, like the place you've grown into, this Leo, this queen of, of nurturing, because it's again, queen of this Aslacia energy. And Aslacia, just so you know, Aslacia, I'm just gonna say this. <laughs> Um, Vedically, um, which isn't this, this is not Vedic calculation, I'm doing Western for you, but Vedically. So if this was actually like up in Gemini, like where you were born, who you were born to be is actually like poisonous to your partners. Like the females, when women were born with moon, sun, and Aslacia, that woman would be known to like be a poisonous woman so kings and queens would find astrologers to get somebody uh, to, to 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 look through their clients for that placement and then the astrologer would be hired by the king to outsource this person because they had this toxic energy that like if they, you marry this person they, a man will die if, they, if a woman with aslacia placements marries a suitor that dude it's fated to die like to die whatever that means like he's gonna lose his whatever so they would do this to like uh kings and stuff they would like find these women and be like here you are a sacred prostitute and we're paying you to go be his wife and you're gonna help us take him down because you have the energy already that by being there you are a blind spot you are a hypnotized you know you've hypnotized him with your snake abilities so yeah like, it's freaking crazy anyways you've progressed into really owning this <laughs> this energy um which is absolutely amazing like you are a force woman but i would say be wary for anybody who tries to come into a romantic situation with you and not be looking to do anything but nurture you because that would be dangerous um so it actually your progressed sun is opposite your progressed jupiter so i need to get drinks you're gonna come with me so progressed uh sun progressed jupiter okay Progress Jupiter is how you've grown into who you're growing to be. Um, so our Jupiter shows how we grow. So it's like if you're a seed, and oh God, I could get so theory about this, but I won't. Okay, I'll cut it short. Um, but if you're a seed, the Jupiter in you is the molecules in a seed that make it multiply. Not that make it grow. That's the Mars molecules the molecules in us that make us expand not the ones that uh drive us to expand not the energy fluctuating friction in the first place that's the mars energy but the jupiter the ability to multiply that's our jupiter so it has that progressed um you had it in you had that placement in aquarius um okay so uh, aquarius energy with jupiter uh is how do I put this? It's like the ultimate expander, expander, like multiply of everything, the, the multiplication of everything. And therefore it can become kind of excessive, but it can also become kind of controlled. It is Saturn energy, okay? Aquarius is Saturn energy. Saturn energy is restricted, uh, formulated to be controlled, formulated. The reason the stars are there are to offer us support and restrictions so that we know our boundaries. Like Saturn is the last planet we see. So we go around Saturn, we go around the rings and we come back with our energy. And that's why it has the rings or at least that's the theory. So um, by having this Jupiter, uh, Saturn uh, energy mixed natally for you in retrograde at the top of your chart, at the MC. The MC of your chart is the mid heaven. Okay, so your mid-heaven is where you aspire to be. The most potential you can reach to is in your mid-heaven. Use those stars and those placements to get there. Your mid-heaven has Jupiter retrograde. Jupiter retrograde means during the time that you were born, molecules were relearning what it means to expand and multiply. It was changing how it was done in the first place. That's what a retrograde energy is. I have retrograde Pluto, so power is how I have to... I had to learn like that's my new 
there. But for you, it's Jupiter. And more importantly, it's in the midheaven. So it's what everybody sees and it's what's gonna make you most successful. Very important, your Jupiter midheaven. <clears throat> so anyways, let's go further in. Um, okay, so. Progressed Sun Leo. Progressed Sun is conjunct Mars in the third house. Remember I said it's like a warrior thing, like a, a, a knight of wands energy. In the third house, it's the house of understanding conceptual ideas and communicating. Writing. Um, progressed Sun is opposite Jupiter. I just talked about that. Jupiter, when a sun is in the opposite, it's like a full moon. Okay? The sun is doing the same thing that a full moon does. The sun's here, we're here, moon's here. Okay, so the sun is wrapping around the earth to put energy on Jupiter. And Jupiter can retrograde. So it's like not moving as it normally does. It's not cutting the same path. It's doing something different. And the sun's energy is coming. You know, say the sun, we're here and the sun's energy comes this way. It has to wrap around the shape of us to get to Jupiter. And then goes all the way around past Jupiter around Saturn comes back around and it has to formulate again around us so that's that's why oppositions are so important because we're getting an outline of how we are affected by that planet how that planet is affected by us um, having the Sun and Jupiter uh, in opposites Jupiter is let's see, first chart At the midheaven, squaring, uh, oh, this is your natal chart. So natally, your Jupiter squares Venus in, in the north node in your 12th house, which is that, like, you have love tucked away, and it's on this unavailable endings place. Um, your Venus is no longer there. I talked to you about that. Now your Venus is sitting in your fourth house natally. It's progressed into Leo, um, which is where, you know, it's gone over your sun. So you figured out how to love yourself. It took a while <laughs> it would have happened a while ago um, when your venus progressed into cancer but um since then you've definitely put love first and you've actually put it into your house and into like how you home and how you have babies and um that's probably because you have a baby <laughs> um okay so i digress uh your ascendant is actually fallen on your son because you natally have this Ashlesha energy, um, which is wrapped around how you care about yourself. It's also wrapped around how you're demanding and aggressive and where your spark of energy comes from because your sun and your Mars are in the same house when you were born. The fact that they progressed together um, because Mars wasn't in retrograde when you were born, uh, because they were at a certain distance, they've actually come closer together as the sun progresses faster than Mars does, right? So the sun caught up to Mars. So you, your path and the way you identify with yourself and the way the world identifies with you, that's your sun sign, right? That's the, the sun sign is what your parents decided by fucking when they fucked. The moon sign and the, sun, and the ascendant is what your soul and the universe decided. I'm still not sure on which one's which because you know it's, it's personal I think the moon might be us but the moon could be the curse I don't know anyways I, digress. I smoked a bowl like right before this it's gonna be a long video I hope you got like a coffee or something <laughs> okay so um let me open this up a little bit so I'm gonna put my to make it up I can't see So, um, when you were born, the vertex was with Pluto. Um, I don't know if you've looked into that placement before. You also have Lilith, uh, Black Moon Lilith, which is like the apogee of the moon. Oh, sorry, my shoulder's sore. Um, that natally is trying your Neptune, which is a spiritual thing. Um, very spiritual considering it's sitting at the 11th house, 12th house access. Uh, and you're... Venus node together kind of puts that there too. Black Moon Lilith in the 11th house really isolates you from everybody else. Uh, it makes you say fuck you to everybody. Be, it's an autonomous thing. She is, I don't know if you've looked into Lilith, but uh, I talk about her a lot. She was, a, she's a savior of mine. She's a patron saint of mine that um, I, I go to when I, I don't have anybody else, which, you know, we don't. So that's who takes care of us. She's our if you could have multiple personalities, she's the bodyguard. <laughs> uh, 
Anyways, she, Natalie, she's very spiritual for you, and I think you probably identify with her quite a bit because there is this rectangle for you, Natalie, where you have her sitting at the 11th, 12th house access, which is like um, the 11th, 12th house access is how uh, you spiritually connect with society and God. It's the 12th house is how you connect with spirituality above yourself. It's, it's the ego, first house, second house, third house, fourth house. Uh, fourth house fifth house sixth house seventh house eighth house uh, ninth house is your thighs tenth house is your knees uh, eleventh house is your calves and twelfth house is your feet um, but it's also you, how you ground because you, you the energy that you touch to the ground the energy that you release through your feet comes out of the universe and enters back through your head okay so this is the 12th house you know from your feet everything else everything else is the 12th house the stuff you can't see um you natally have neptune or you natally have a very strong uh 12th house because venus in the north node sits there so you've always felt comfort and spirituality and, and such and that's um why you have jupiter as the mc that's why you're going to be a spiritual teacher and talker and uh, and you are a um a empathetic uh person towards the spiritual culture uh, your 11th house is massive, Natalie, um, and it starts in Pisces and ends uh, in um, uh, the, ends in Taurus. So uh, Venus is actually at her strength. She likes being um, up in Taurus. That is, like, if she can't be in Libra, she'll be happily in Taurus because she rules that area. So you very much have a, a natural spiritual home um, and it's very lit uh, with passion and desire and that has always put you in this weirdo place, but that weirdo place is how you grow. That's your retrograde Jupiter, right? Um, okay. So we're gonna go down to the next chart. Okay, the one that says Cancer Rising. Leo, it's the very bottom chart, I believe. And it's Cancer Rising, Leo, Sun, and Mars. That's the one we're looking at. That's your progress chart. This is the chart you've grown into. The charts, I have them overlapping so you can see. Uh, the transits on um, the progress chart is the last chart. So that's the transits for now. So the green stuff outside, it'll say progress. Under the chart, it says progress chart with transit. That's what you've progressed into with the space weather of right now. Okay, the eclipse. Okay, yeah. So, this is exciting. All right. So, you've progressed into Aslacia. So, you've actually progressed into your identity and your path because that's where your son was in the first place. Your son has progressed into Leo. So, you're very, very comfortable shining in that who you are, especially considering second house son. You've always, you know, that's where you reside. You reside in your values and your possessions. Um, it used to make you a hoarder and make you like never leave your house, but now it actually makes you shine for other people. Um, that uh, <laughs> the eleventh house has the access of Black Moon Lilith, uh, making squares to um, the sun, and the sun makes a square to Pluto. Uh, that means that there, a square is frictional energy. Um, so Pluto for you works in a deep, sexual, transformative, raw, secretive um, place, deep in your home. And it started because there were things done when you were little that shouldn't have been done. Um, power wielded by people shouldn't have been wielded. There was violations that shouldn't have been violated that made you have to step into your power spiritually and that's how you ended up with the sixth house uh, Neptune placement the sextile for you between Neptune and Pluto uh, we all have that sextile but for you specifically it works through how you throw power around at home and and create a ability to escape reality from a daily obsessional addiction to other people um, and their substance abuses that Neptune K 
can be shifted and to what I think it is now for you, which is a place where you can make daily meditation and spirituality instead of daily, you know, intoxication and escaping. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, so the progress now is that the... Sorry, my bird is feeling like it needs to talk right now. What's up? <laughs> You good? You look beautiful. I know, I know, but you look beautiful. Hold on. Anyways, let's continue. So Mercury in the second house. Second house is isolated, which means that it is trapped in Leo. It's trapped in your identity, your personality. Your values are trapped in your identity, your personality. It is very hard for you to take your values and spread them to your children and how you have fun because you are very fucking serious about the way you have kids. Um, and the reason that is is because that's where the Saturn structure comes from. That's where the father figure comes from. It comes from an internalized place that children give you, almost a restriction that you have because of children. Um, it makes you very restrictive towards children. Uh, but that's where things flip on their head for you. And that is a past life thing that comes from your father, okay? That's not you. You transcend that into a spiritual thing. He trained, whatever that was for you with your dad or masculine figures in your life currently, they might use it as an escapism, but you're able to use it as a self-nurturing thing. But it is, it sits right on there, okay? So self-nurturing is what you've progressed into. The Venus is still in the 12th house. Um, and it might be for the rest of your life. It progresses pretty slowly. I'd have to look into it, but uh, it's going to be there for a long time. It's opposite Neptune. Venus opposite Neptune is a idolized love, spiritual love. Um, I just caught the clock and it was 12, 22, 12. Interesting. So your Venus is now uh, squaring your MC, but it's Venus square MC Pisces. Venus likes Pisces. So that, that, that's an easy fix. That's, a, that's easy spiritual work. It's about acceptance. Um, and it also trines your Mercury in Leo. So it, it lights up. You have this spiritual light um, your Venus has progressed into a communicative spirit where you can actually get into, you're getting your Venus is coming into that Aslacia energy. It's, it's leaving the energy of, of Gemini and coming into that um, Aslacia energy where your ascendant is and where your sun was. And you know what I mean? Like it's, it, you're starting to get, your, when Venus enters a sign, it makes it the most beneficial it could. So all of the bright side of that sign are going to show up. None of the bad side of that sign are going to show up. That's what Venus does. Venus is our highlighter, like our pink rose colored glasses. Um, and so your Venus has progressed to, uh, try your Mercury in the second house. So that lights up that isolated house. So with spirituality, you can open up your values. And then with, if you do that properly, there's a square from, uh, Mercury in Leo over to the vertex. And the vertex for you is this past life stuff where you tap into stuff from your past life and you tap into stuff from your childhood. Um, especially concerning your father, and then you hit this grand trine, and you see that blue triangle bouncing off series, going from all of the water signs, going from the Scorpio transformation to the um, the aspirations in Pisces to the the root of self in series Cancer. So, like, yeah, awesome. Um, so, by meditation and spirituality, you access that stuff. But it can be escapism, so watch that. Um, Mercury also accesses almost like a fucking yod. That's why it says yod. Yod is like a god finger. Okay, it's a half of a sextile, so it's um, to semi square. It's the dotted green lines. You, when that happens, it's like faded functionality. It's like because this here is here, that's gonna work right. That's what that's what that's like. It's like a, a cause and effect. Because Mercury is sitting on the regular star, your MC is lit. Your MC is just lit. Um, okay, so the south, the nodes actually have some pretty cool aspects too. The north node I said was like right at the aspect of, 
Um, right, well, it's like 10 degrees, five degrees. Uh, Lilith and the note are like complementary of each other. The note is squaring the sun. So um, when you isolate yourself with other people and you like focus too hard um, on those walls and that, that burden of responsibility and stability, independence, when you lean too hard on that, um, you end up with that major loss where your Jupiter, which is normally how you grow and expand, starts taking losses and, and you have massive transformations in a, ne not a negative, but a stripping form. Um, and it definitely comes through socialization because the, again, the, uh, the, the Aquarius house is in the eighth and it's trapped, right? It's isolated to Aquarius. Your Jupiter is isolated to Aquarius. So the only way that you can grow is through your Chiron stuff. So we have to look at your Jupiter to see how we grow. Your Chiron in the 12th house, which is that wounded healer energy. And if you don't know anything about Chiron, let me know. I'll send you some videos. <coughs> Chiron's really, really important to your chart natally because you were born with Gemini rising. Um, you have this, uh, our generation that has Gemini rising, we were born to communicate uh, healing. We we're born to like vocalize that. I have it too. It's like sixth, seventh house for me. So I do it for other people. Um, for you, it's like on your ascendant, so you live it for other people, you live the transformation for other people, you learn it, you become it, and it becomes part of your identity. Um, it's the communication of, you know, being the healer. Anyway, um, your Chiron makes an opposition to Uranus natally. I, I don't have that. No, oh, because you were born before me, after me. Um, yeah, so your, your Uranus and Chiron have this connection that puts Chiron in focus of alienate, alienization because Uranus also can be very alienating um, because it, it sees everything, it sees all the truth, it sees all the details and Uranus sits in the sixth house and it's retrograde and the, the sun is on that right now. So like that OCD energy that you have, that ability to see all the things, that's what's really based in your healing energy. That's what you're teaching people how to ease the, 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 the rest, the 12th house, through, you know, isolating the details instead of the people, from the details. Um, so your moon has moved into the seventh house. This is a very, and, and it, you have progressed into almost a full moon energy. Um, the moon is with is, is opposite series instead of the sun. So this, like I said, there, there's like an alignment when there's a full moon, when the earth is in the middle, right? So your moon, which is your emotional reflection of this world and your receiver of emotion, of energy from this universe, before it gets to us, it gets to the moon. It's the last filter that it goes through before it hits us, because it's the closest thing to us, so they've said, other than our own fucking satellites. Um, when the energy, which is it has been uh, Jupiter, Pluto, and Neptune colliding in Capricorn, there has been a force of restriction put on so that new things can come. And I mean, like this accumulated with COVID. Everybody felt that trans that transit. And if you look like on this set, on this last chart that we're looking at, um, you see a Capricorn Moon conjunct part of Fortune. That's the little cross with the circle. On top of that, the green planets, that's the transit of right now, okay? That transit is literally forming this ability to heal yourself that you've got from this escalation energy. It's, it, this is all faded timing. You're supposed to be restricted from the outside world and how you connect with them and how you stabilize them. You have been restricted and you're continually being restricted because you've got this spiritual block where before you encounter other people you see, you put on your glasses and you look through your Neptune eyes because Neptune has moved into a place where Venus in the 12th house spiritually lighting you up here is giving you these rose colored glasses so that you can see the world in, an, in a very accepting loving way but it's also put this restrictive emotional center on you like a detachment almost and that will continue to progress into more detachment um, and that's supposed to happen 
It's, it's to help you so that you, when you meet people and you encounter people, you can immediately attach onto them and filter through them because your moon's there and you're part of fortune setters. So you can benefit because you can read them. Um, but because it's Saturnian and it's ruled by Saturn and Saturn's been coming over it and Saturn's in this massive grand trine for you that you got from your dad, this energy of father, like everybody's getting their father energy right now. It's all making sense now, myself included. Um, but because you're having this reflection of what father is and has been and how you've become, it, it gives you immediately works that caring energy. And there is a positive uh, aspect from both the MC, which is your aspirations, to that protective suit. You're like, you're, you're like a sponge. Like you go out, you can see people, you read them, but your Capricorn moon is like the filter that you have before the information gets in. So you immediately are like a magnet to other people's structures and, and karmic stuff, which because of the transits of today and like the transits of the last three years as Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto have been working this shit around you, your Capricorn moon has been able, like as you've progressed this Capricorn moon, you've learned to filter people so that there are boundaries. There are, there's yours and there is theirs. And I think that's why Lilith is sitting where she's sitting for you. Um, Uh, the moon is about to move into this I mean this um, eclipse is happening on your Uranus and your Chiron so you're really learning your wounded healer is a weirdo <laughs> you're really learning that it is about the, the day to day life in the way that you don't you don't see things like everybody else does you, that's what this full moon is for you um, and it will continue to be uh, the north node's going to hit your Chiron soon <laughs> within the next year. Um, I've got a phone call, so I'm gonna pause it.